Hi, I'm Sherma from Geoscience Australia. Today we're visiting the National Mineral and Fossil Collection and we're down in a room in the basement where most of it is stored. This is a place that visitors don't normally get to see. I have Josh with me today and he's going to help us to learn more about fossils. Josh, first of all, what is a fossil? Well, that's a great question, Shona. Uh, fossils are the remains of ancient life forms that once existed on Earth. They can be thousands of years old to billions of years old. There are two types of fossils usually. Uh, body fossils, such as this trilobite, which is approximately 520 million years old. And am I right in saying these used to swim around and crawl on the floor of the ocean? Yes. They didn't live on land? No. What else have we got? We've got fossilised leaves here. Um, ammonite, which is also a marine organism. The other type of fossils are called trace fossils, such as these worm burrows here, or these arthropod trackways, likely made by a trilobite. So that would be a trilobite like, crawling along on the sand? Yes. And this would be some sort of worm eating its way through the sand and leaving yes. a, a trail? Yes. But what about this one? So these are really cool. These are what's called coprolites, or in other words, are fossilised poo. You might go, ooh, but I promise you, it doesn't smell. This is solid rock now. Solid rock. <laughs> and what trace fossils do is that they help us infer the behaviour of the animal, or what it ate, in case of fossilised poo. So these are amazing. These are beautiful specimens. How do these fossils form? Fossils are very special because they are extremely rare. Mm -hmm. For an animal to be fossilised, it takes a series of unique events. To help show that, I have this demonstration here. Imagine this as a Cretaceous riverbed about 80 million years ago, mm -hmm. and all these dinosaurs have come through a drink of water. Unfortunately for them, however, a landslide or a flash flood event occurs and kills all the dinosaurs off. Oh, poor things. We have all these dead dinosaurs. What, what happens to their bodies? Well, as they decay, they are eaten and are scavenged up by predators. So that all their bones and soft bits are taken away, disarticulated. But we have one left. What's going to happen to that one? Fortunately for us, uh, this little guy will be uh, rapidly buried by fine grain sediment. So imagine we have a big flood that carries a lot of sand, and that sand starts to bury a dead dinosaur. And this could happen over many, many years, building up many, many layers of sand and mud. And what's happening to our dead dinosaur down there in this time? Well, as uh, sediments get layered on top of the animal, it slowly compresses it into the bone and replaces the organic material with the rock. So the uh, animal's bones get slowly turned into stone. So it's fossilised down there, but this could be way down underground. After millions more years, maybe this section of the crust is in a different situation. It could be uplifted and we could have weathering and erosion removing the layers of rock above and we might get to the 21st century and we've got an explorer, a geologist or paleontologist is out exploring around and happens to see a little glimmer of a bone in the rock and they might excavate a bit more and reveal a fossilised dinosaur. So now we know how fossils have occurred. Um, why do scientists collect them? What use are fossils to us? Uh, fossils are really useful for actual scientists uh, because fossils are a gateway into the past and we can use this to help understand how Earth and life has evolved over time. Mm. For example, this Glossopteris here is only found on southern continents such as Antarctica, Australia, South Africa, Asia and India. These uh, show us that all these continents were joined together at one point in Earth's history. What about this? What can we learn from a tooth like this? Yeah. Well, we can learn a lot from a tooth, uh, for example, what the animal ate. And we know that by understanding modern species, we know that this tooth was adapted for eat and dry vegetation. Another type of fossil we have in our collection are micro fossils. Can I pull this open? Please do. Now, I can't see, or I can hardly see anything on these slides. It's tiny. What are these? So these are what's called foraminifera and they are single-celled marine organisms. Fortunately, I have a 3D printout, a blown-up model of a 4M, and these are extremely useful 
for inferring past ocean environments, such as temperature, salinity, and ocean levels. So these are actively being used for scientific research these days? Not just this part of the collection, but the entire collection is part of the research. This collection dates back more than 100 years. So we have amazing records from 1900s. It's just a really historic collection. Josh, thank you so much for having us visit the collection today. It's been really wonderful to learn how useful and used this National Paleontological Collection is that's held here at Geoscience Australia.